Welcome back to the uh, equine anatomy uh, course. And again, we started talking about the anatomy of the equine head, and uh, we uh, talked first about some sort um, external features on the on the equine skull. Uh, then we moved and talked about some internal features, especially uh, the nostrils and the nasal cavities and all the concha and all the meatuses. And then um, uh, this time. Uh, we will be talking about uh, the uh, paranasal sinuses. So the paranasal sinuses or the uh, sinuses is a very important topic because, because horses uh, frequently encounters uh, a, a number of clinical cases such as sinusitis or sinus infections and things like that and they require drainage, they require a uh, yeah, a surgical treatment um, and and so what we would like to do is uh, would like to, to know basically what are these uh, uh, nasal sinuses uh, what are the borders for them uh, and then uh, how can we drain them uh, uh, surgically so uh, to, to illustrate the importance of, of the topic I just, I'm just gonna show you a clinical case uh, of of um, uh, uh, sinusitis. So, uh, paranasal sinuses are gas-filled cavities between the internal and external plates of the flat bones that uh, comprise the uh, skull, and they are considered diverticular of the nasal cavity lined by ciliated glandular epithelium, uh, and they have unique uh, relation with the nasal concha. All of this, I'm going to talk about it in a second, and their main function is well, there they have two main functions. One is to reduce the weight of the skull, and the second one is to provide spaces for a uh, teeth to expand and to grow. So, two main functions for uh, these gas filled cavities that are located between the internal and the external um, uh, plates of the um, of the flat bones of the skull. And um, the first function is that they reduce the weight of the skull, of course, because they are filled with air. And the second thing is because they expand uh, or they provide spaces for teeth to grow and to, uh, to expand. So, so this is the definition of, of the sinuses. What are, what are the sinuses that we have? We have... Uh, three sets of, of nasal sinuses. We have the conchofrontal sinus, we have the maxillary sinus, and we have the sphenopalatine sinus. In addition to their actual structure, they also have relation with the nasal concha, which I will discuss in a in, in few minutes. So let's see where these sinuses are located. This slide shows two views uh, of the equine head. One is a dorsal view to the left of the picture, and one is a lateral view, is the right of the picture. And the large blue component in the dorsal view is called the conco frontal sinus. The large component on the dorsal view, which is colored blue in this picture, is called 
conical frontal. The yellow and the orange, two separate rectangles, if you will, is the maxillary sinus. And the same color corresponds with the lateral view. Now, the sphenopalatine, you will not see it from this view. We have to see it from the inside of the head. And I will show it to you later. But these are the two major sinuses. Conco frontal and maxillary sinuses. And we'll discuss each of them and how they are related to the nasal concha, as I mentioned earlier. This is another picture of the two major sinuses in the equine skull. The upper one is the conco frontal, and the lower one is the maxillary. Now, when we open the head, we have like a cross section. We will find the sphenopalatine sinus. The sphenopalatine sinus is located caudal to the ethmoid concha, which is denoted by the letter E here, ethmoid concha. Caudal to that is the sphenopalatine sinus, and it is dorsal to the nasopharynx, which is denoted as N in this picture. So it's dorsal to the nasopharynx, pharynx, and it's dorsal also to the guttural pouches, guttural pouches, GP, and cranial to the basi sphenoid bone, which is denoted as P in this picture. The easiest way to remember it is this sinus is caudal, immediately caudal, to the ethmoid concha. Again, E in this picture. E. Now, we saw this picture earlier when I talked about the nasal septum uh, in the upper picture and about the nasal meatuses in the lower picture. We have the nasal septum and we have the nasal meatuses. We can also see in the bottom picture the ethmoid concha and the sphenopalatine sinus. Now, with the dorsal and the ventral concha, dorsal and ventral concha, we will start to see relations with the sinuses. And I'll explain this relation momentarily. This is another picture that shows the relation between the dorsal concha and the ethmoid, the dorsal concha A, B, and ventral to that is the ventral concha. Caudal to A, B is the ethmoid Conca. We will talk about the relations first with the dorsal conca and the frontal sinus. But before that, let's talk about what comprises the dorsal conca first. The dorsal concha has a rostral scroll compartment, that's A, 
and a caudal conchal or sinus compartment so this is the dorsal concha it has two parts one or cranial or rostral and that's scrolled and the other one is caudal or conchal or sinus component now let's see the relation with the sinus the caudal part of the dorsal concha the door the caudal part of the dorsal concha which is b in this picture communicates with the frontal sinus communicate with the frontal sinus to form the concofrontal sinus this is a picture of the concofrontal sinus the three red arrows in the upper sinus show you this large sinus the concofrontal sinus now let's talk about the ventral concha the ventral concha also consists of two compartments from a to a prime is the rostral part which is a scrolled part just like a in the dorsal concha and then a caudal concha or sinus compartment which we will call b now what's the relation of this concha with the sinus the caudal part of the ventral concha which is b in this case communicates with the rostral maxillary sinus over the infraorbital canal again the caudal portion of the ventral concha which is b in this case communicates with the rostral maxillary sinus so the caudal part of the dorsal concha communicates with the frontal sinus that's why it's called concofrontal the ventral concha communicates with the maxillary sinus the caudal part of the ventral concha communicates with the maxillary sinus now the concofrontal and the maxillary communicate together through the frontal maxillary opening it's a large opening it's a large opening a in this picture a in this picture so the concofrontal and the maxillary sinuses communicate through a large opening that's called fronto maxillary opening fronto maxillary opening i have a little diagram to show you how the communications take place this is a cartoon that shows the communication between the sinuses and the concha the caudal part of the dorsal concha in the upper part of the picture communicates with the frontal sinus the caudal part the caudal portion of the dorsal concha communicates with the frontal sinus that's why the name concofrontal sinus came now the caudal part of the maxillary sinus communicate also with the frontal sinus through the frontal 
maxillary opening. Thirdly, the sphenopalatine, the sphenopalatine sinus communicates with the caudal portion of the maxillary sinus. This is the third communication. The fourth communication is between the caudal portion of the ventral concha and the rostral portion of the maxillary sinus. I will repeat. There are four communications between the sinuses and the conchas. Number one. The caudal portion of the dorsal concha communicates with the frontal sinus. That's where the name conchofrontal sinus came from. The second communication is between the frontal sinus, or the conchofrontal sinus, if you will, and the caudal portion of the maxillary sinus. This is the second communication through the frontomaxillary opening. It's a huge opening, as I showed you in the previous slide. The third communication is between the sphenopalatine and the caudal portion of the maxillary sinus. That's communication number three. The fourth and the last communication occurs between the caudal portion of the ventral concha and the rostral portion of the maxillary sinus. Four communications. Caudal part of dorsal concha with the frontal sinus. Frontal sinus with the caudal portion of the maxillary. Sphenopalatine with the caudal portion of the maxillary. Caudal portion of the ventral concha with the rostral portion of the maxillary. These are the communications with all of the sinuses and the conchas. The rostral part communicates with the maxillary sinus. The rostral part communicates with the ventral concha over the infraorbital canal. The caudal part communicates dorsally with the conchofrontal sinus and caudally with the sphenopalatine. Both drain into the nasal cavity via the nasomaxillary fissure, which passes through the middle nasal meatus. So basically, the end product is going to be all in the middle nasal meatus. Middle nasal meatus. Now, A and B in this picture represent the rostral and the caudal portions of the maxillary sinus. Rostral is A, caudal is B, separated by a bony septum. Bony septum. And this is a very important structure. The bony septum is about 5 centimeters caudal to the rostral end of the facial crest. We've seen the facial crest in the very first lecture when I talked about the external features of the face on the skull of the horse. And this bony septum that separates the rostral from the caudal portions of the maxillary sinuses is located 5 centimeter centimeters caudal to the rostral end of the facial crest caudal to the facial to the to the rostral end of the facial crest this is this is very important and 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 also it's important to remember the landmarks for the maxillary sinus the borders of the maxillary sinus 
cranially align connecting the rostral end of the facial crest with the infraorbital foramen. You can see that in the picture. Caudally, the rostral part of the bony orbit. Ventrally, the facial crest. And dorsally, a line connecting the infraorbital foramen with the medial canthus of the eye. Very important. These landmarks are very important because you will utilize them in surgery if you have a chance to drain the maxillary sinus in cases of severe sinusitis or hematoma and things like that. Or even tooth abscesses. So, cranially is a line connecting between the rostral end of the facial crest and the infraorbital foramen. Caudally, the rostral part of the bony orbit of the eye. Ventrally, the facial crest. And dorsally, a line connecting the infraorbital foramen with the medial canthus of the eye. Now, how how we gonna how we gonna access the maxillary sinus surgically between the infraorbital foramen and the medial canthus this is the line avoid the infraorbital canal and the nasolacrimal duct these are two structures you want to avoid in order for you to be able to access the maxillary uh, uh, sinus uh, effectively and successfully to drain it or or to extract some of the molar teeth in this picture you will see that the roots of molar three and two and one and sometimes pre molar four is embedded in the maxillary sinus so three cheek teeth which is M1, 2, and 3 in this picture, molar 1, molar 2, molar 3, and also sometimes the root of premolar 4 may be partially embedded in the rostral part of the maxillary sinus. So now you will see how important the borders for the, the, the uh, maxillary sinus are because you have to know them in order for you to be able to open it and drain it. This is a very important thing to do. So either in cases of sinusitis or in cases of uh, tooth infections uh, or abscess or things like that, you need to utilize these, these uh, yeah, uh, landmarks. Let's, let's see again. Molar 1, molar 2, and molar 3 are ventral to the infraorbital canal shown or indicated here by the two arrows incompletely separate separate the maxillary sinus into medial and lateral portions that is how the two compartments of the maxillary sinus are separated by the bony septum which is located five centimeters caudal to the most rostral end of the facial crest. The bony septum that separates the rostral from the caudal compartment of the maxillary sinus is located five centimeters caudal to the most rostral end of the facial Crest, very important landmarks surgically. Now, let's take a look at the sphenopalatine. 
The sphenopalatine sinus, as I mentioned earlier, is located immediately caudal to the ethmoid concha, which is E in this picture. Also, it's located dorsal to the nasopharynx and the guttural pouches, N and GP, respectively, and cranial to the physis between the basosphenoid and the basooccipital bones. Now, this physis becomes important in younger animals, especially because sometimes it's not closed. And therefore, if there is any infection that, that, that occur um, in, in, in the sinus, in the sphenopalatine sinus or in the guttural pouches or the nasopharynx, Sometimes the infection can go across to the central nervous system and cause uh, neurological um, symptoms. So, so we just have to be careful, especially in young animals, uh, from, from infection uh, going through, through this uh, physis. Now, let's talk again about the sphenopalatine sinus. I mentioned earlier that the sphenopalatine sinus drains rostrally into the caudal maxillary sinus. The caudal maxillary sinus, which is the third communication that we've talked about. I've talked about four communications uh, between, between the, um, the, the frontal sinus and the caudal part of the uh, dorsal concha, between the uh, frontal sinus and the caudal part of the maxillary sinus. And the third one is between the sphenopalatine and the caudal part of the uh, uh, maxillary sinus. And then the fourth one is between the caudal part of the ventral concha and the uh, uh, rostral part of the maxillary sinus. So the sphenopalatine sinus drains rostrally into the caudal maxillary sinus, which then drains into the nasal cavity via the, via the, the uh, middle nasal meatus, as I mentioned, the common place for, for the secretions to go. So now we've talked about all of these all of these sinuses. Now how we are going to drain them. We have two techniques. We have two surgical approaches or two techniques. Terrifination is one and bone flap is another one. Terrifination is one and bone flap is another one. Of course, that's why bone flap, well, well for both techniques, you have to know the landmarks for, for the, the sinuses. Otherwise, you won't be able to, to drain them. These are pictures that shows terrifination, basically. You can do it either in, in the frontal sinus or in the maxillary sinus, A and B, or even C and D. And in the picture to the uh, right-hand side, uh, you can see that these are little circles that that uh, perform the uh, the terpenation. This is the terpenation a uh, uh, tool that you use different sizes based on the size of the uh, of the hole that you want to drain uh, or open, I should say. And then when you when you put that on the on the uh, bone of the skull, just like the next picture you can start uh, doing half circles, continuous uh, half circles with, with pressure, and you will end up with something like this. This is basically the opening from the terpenation uh, technique that you, we've utilized. We open that and, and then, you know, we, we start seeing pus or whatever drain, you know, uh, exudate is basically um, in there. Now, so this is the terpenation technique. Bone flap is uh, basically creating a flap of the bone, cutting the bone from three sides and keeping the fourth side intact. What you do is based on the landmarks that we've talked about. Uh, we, we open this in the, either the frontal sinus or the maxillary sinus. We open them and we drain the sinuses, either the maxillary or the contrafrontal. This is a picture showing uh, 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 draining the uh, the maxillary sinus uh, with with a uh, with a bone flap. And here we can see when we uh, take out that um, bone flap, uh, the type of exudate that might be appearing 
you know, in, in the surgical field. So this is something that we need to drain and take out, uh, basically. This is another, another picture showing a, a, a very a big terpenation um, how they opened and, and or, or a, a, a bone flap technique that you remove the, the bone and um, uh, clean all the, the exudate from the axillary sinus and then in the, in the picture to the right hand side you see how the surgeon basically after, after draining the sinus and everything uh, put the bone uh, flap back in and he sutured the skin and the bone will, will, will heal uh, uh, basically uh, on its own uh, after that. So, so, so this is, th these are the two techniques that are common to use to, to drain the, uh, the um, uh, uh, sinuses. Um, and sometimes we can utilize them also to, um, again, to extract uh, teeth, spe especially molar teeth. Uh, through the uh, uh, frontomaxillary opening, basically. Um, now, uh, with 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 this discussion, we 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 finished the um, the the nasal sinuses. Um, the next section, I will be talking about um, another special structure in the in the equine head, and the, those are the guttural pouches. So until until next time.